Strawberry Commodity System Analysis, presented by Arwen Francine Aliado, Hannah Joyner Vitoria, Andrea Chena Gil Rosanto, Mikael Ved Torres, and I'm Samuel Benedict Laposa. Strawberry, or Fragara X Ananasa, is our garden strawberry bred in Brittany, France in the 1750s via a cross of Fragara virginiana and Fragara chiluensis. It is now cultivated in commercial production due to its better produce and adaptability across various countries. And as of 2018, the top strawberry producing countries are China, USA, Mexico, Turkey, and Egypt. History of strawberry in the Philippines started as early as the 19th century, where the Spaniards brought strawberries to specifically to La Trinidad because of the favorable climatic condition. In the 1960s, large-scale farming became evident with strawberry and cut flower being cultivated. In the 1970s, La Trinidad became known as the Salad Bowl of the Philippines. On March 1981, La Trinidad held its first patronal town fiesta and strawberry festival. In the 1990s, strawberry production became a motherhood of livelihood, thus the place was called the Strawberry Fields of the Philippines. And in the 20th century, introduction of researches and technologies in farming and production are now being applied. Currently, the Philippines from the 70th out of the 70th producing countries, with an average production of 921 metric tons per year. Strawberries are specifically grown in Benguet because of the cold climate there present, and specifically La Trinidad having an estimated 72 hectares of land and on some parts in Baguio City and Mountain Province. Moreover, due to extensive research and development, strawberry production are now at present in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. However, most producers and growers are, sco are small-scale farms, and the strawberry utilization in the country mostly depends on local production and importation rather than exportation. Socioeconomic importance of strawberry includes its health benefits. It is low in calories and fats but rich in phytonutrients, minerals, and vitamins. It also has potential benefits against cancer, aging, inflammation, and neurological diseases. Second is employment. The industry provides job opportunities for laborers, farmers, and other stakeholders. Our paper is anchored on this particular commodity system analysis framework. This vertical structure outlines the following subsystems from input to consumer along with the different sectors in the subsystem. In short, this is the process from cultivating strawberries to bringing them to the table of final consumers. First subsystem, which is the input sector. The major inputs used by strawberry growers are seeds, fertilizers, and pesticides. To supplement the soil nutrients, organic and inorganic fertilizers and nitrogen are applied to increase the yield. Majority of strawberry seeds and runners are distributed by LGUs and tissue culture laboratories and nurseries, while fertilizers and pesticides are imported from China. For the production sector, let us start with production trends, volume, and prices. Figure shows the harvested land area and production of strawberries in the country, which registered an unstable and fluctuating trend from year 1990 to 2018. In 2018, it had a total land area of 138 hectares, almost near to 1995's record of 141 hectares. For the production of strawberry, it has a fluctuating trend from year 1990 to 2018. Lowest production was recorded in 2007 with only 484 tons and afterwards an increasing trend was seen and in 2018 it had 842 tons. For the yield of strawberry, it has a decreasing trend from year 1990 to 2018. Highest yields were recorded in 1991 to 1994. Eventually, the following years registered a declining yield whereas in 2018 it had recorded a 61,225 hectares. For the prices of strawberries in the country, it has a declining scale from October 2019, costing 279 pesos and 36 cents per kilo to 
February 2020, costing for only 120 pesos and 70 cents per kilo. Cultural management practices in the country are as follows. Pre-planting, preparation of planting stock, soil management and land preparation, production and planting. For the, care, for the care maintenance, it constitutes of irrigation, fertilizer application, and peasant disease management. While the other practices are the harvesting, sorting and packing, and the last one is the storing and shipping. For the technological developments, these are the the diffusion technology and aquaponics or the so-called hydroponics. The diffusion technology was conceptualized by the PCA. This, this technology can increase the produce to 98 to 105% or from 50 to 35 runners that are produced through conventional method. While hydroponics can provide a commercial alternative to traditional soil-based production for significant crops, which includes strawberries, and this results in a much higher yield of three to four times more than the yield from soil-based production. Now, let's discuss the processing sector. Strawberries are highly perishable goods with a storage lifespan of only one week. This is the reason why strawberries are mostly sold for fresh consumption. But if it will be processed, it should be done immediately to avoid rotting. Processing of strawberries is important since it lengthens its shelf life and it allows product differentiation, which is essential in marketing the product. Strawberries are processed into different categories, food and non-food products. For the food products, this includes strawberry preserves, juices, wines, jams, and many more. And also, it is widely used as ingredient or flavoring in making desserts, pastries, cakes, and other strawberry-based foods. As for the non-food products, strawberries are also used as ingredient in pharmaceutical, skin care, body care, and other cosmetic products since it is a natural antioxidant and is a good source of vitamin C, a and E. Majority of the manufacturers in the processing sector consist of small enterprises, but Ladies Choice Consolidated Food Company and Magnolia Dairy Product Inc. has a high demand for processing of strawberries. Moreover, Q's Finest, Jam R Food Products, and Rina Seloga by Wines and Fruit are some of the strawberry processing enterprises from the Cordillera region. In this slide, we can see the import volume, value, and unit price of the fresh strawberry from 2011 to 2015. It has a high value in the earlier years, but it dropped down to 1,001 metric tons in 2014, then it increased again in 2015. Well, in this slide, we can see that the import value of prepared or preserved strawberries fluctuates with 2.64 million metric tons as the highest value in the five-year frame, while the lowest value is approximately 51,000 metric, metric tons in 2014. Furthermore, in the marketing sector, here is the marketing channel followed by the strawberry industry in the country. Strawberries are grown in farms and institutions, and once they are harvested, they proceed or they are marketed to the processors, the traders, the financiers, and are directly to the consumers. Those products from processors, traders, financiers might proceed to wholesalers and retailers as well. Volume absorbed by each channel, strawberry products, both raw and processed, are mostly absorbed by the domestic market rather than exportation. Industrial processors take raw strawberries, both local and import, to processing them into high volume goods. Meanwhile, the financiers are the one responsible in transporting and bringing fresh strawberries from farms into buyers in Metro Manila. And key buyers are mostly consumers, particularly farms which utilize self picking or readily available fresh strawberries for sale. In the Philippines, 
Strawberries are mainly grown in elevated and temperate areas like Benguet, Bakyo, and Baupong Mount Province. The price depends upon the supply and demand situation, and strawberries are being promoted through conducting trade fair festivals. For the price trends, the global producer price trend exhibits an increase and decrease trend depending on the supply and demand situation. With 2019 as the highest recorded average producer price, while 2001 gave the lowest price of 1,325.98 US dollars per ton. Meanwhile, global production and supply of strawberries shows an increasing trend from year 1994 to 2018. Also, the demand for strawberries are increasing across various countries and is commonly higher during holidays such as Christmas. For the projected demand and gap, since the global production continues to increase, strawberry consumption is also expected to increase, taking the market to 11.5 million metric tons in 2025. In our country, it is also projected that demand will also increase in relevance to the average growth rate of 16.85% from 2017 to 2019. Additionally, since our country is currently facing technological gaps and diminishing area of plantation, local production wouldn't be sufficient, thereby leading to importation to meet the demand. Here are the top exporting countries of strawberry with Spain as the leading country followed by Mexico and USA respectively. Meanwhile, in terms of importation, USA is the leading country followed by Canada and Germany respectively. For the support sector of strawberry commodity in our country, several government agencies, LGUs, private organizations, and research universities are engaged in order to help growers and sellers to improve the production and quality of strawberry in our country. This includes Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Tourism, LGUs like Municipality of Lanter in Dagbenguet, and Research University like Benguet State University. In addition, the Department of Agriculture plays a huge role in supporting the production of strawberry in our country. Here are some of the development programs and projects for the improvement of strawberry production and quality in the Philippines. Most of this is led by the sectors which I have mentioned earlier, such as the OSC, DA, DTI, and research universities like Benguet State University. While this slide shows the possible support that can be given to the strawberry production in our country. And now for the investment priorities, it is important to focus on the consumer satisfaction, the development of strategies for export growth, maintaining the quality of the strawberry, and also assessing the value chain capacity. And for the other agro-services, it is a good strategy to continuously invest on research for improvement of the commodity and its farming practices. And also, it is a good um, strategy to invest on logistics since it is very crucial in marketing the commodity. Integrated analysis. For the input sector, strengths include the distribution of seeds and runners to the growers is supported by the LGUs, availability of nurseries to cultivate stocks, and accessibility to inputs from abroad. Academic institutions such as the BSU and other research centers conduct researches. Weaknesses are the high cost of planting materials, unstability of breed varieties, limited land for cultivation, lack of technology, and lack of capital. Opportunities of the sector is the R&D in technological diffusion, such as the tissue culture strawberry and R&D in breeding new varieties. However, threats include the high investment costs in technology and R&D, and also quality and price of imported planting materials should be carefully monitored. For the production sector, strength is the location of La Trinidad and the Benguet province as a whole is appropriate and ideal for strawberry production. Witnesses are lack of technology, lack of post-harvest facilities, and limited production volume, thus failing to meet the market demand. 
For the opportunities now, other areas in the country started cultivating strawberries and tissue culture strawberry is available. However, major threat of the sector are the pests and diseases. Now for the processing sector, its strength is that it is situated in Benguet province wherein the production sector is also centered due to the high perishability of strawberries. Value adding and product differentiation is continuously improved. And also, there is support and coordination of LGUs, academic institutions, and research centers to the local manufacturers. Weakness is that the limited production volume or supplies of strawberries affects the sector's capacity to meet market demand and lack of technology. For the opportunity, there is availability of value-adding training and skills training programs. However, threats include the high investment costs in technology and R&D. For the marketing sector, even though there is a stable market and increasing demand for strawberries, which is a strength and an opportunity for the sector, on the other side, there is an insufficient production volume to supply the market, which is why the country still imports strawberry to meet the demand. For the threats, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, marketing of strawberries and processed products became a challenge since it hinders the marketing capacity and limits the tourists to visit the place as well as to transport these goods across the country. For the support sector, one of its strengths are the research centers, academic institutions, government agencies that are able to conduct researches. And meanwhile, similar to other upland vegetable crops, one of the weaknesses in this sector is the logistics or transportation of the produce to the market, especially now that the world is facing a pandemic crisis which is a major threat for the support sector. And in order to address this, the Department of Agriculture has been linking their association to direct buyers and they also provide transport assistance. Now, for the conclusion and recommendation, after assessing the strawberry commodity in our country, we therefore conclude that the Philippine strawberry industry is established in our local market. Also, there is a significant support in the industry that enables the farmers small enterprises, and community-based livelihood to flourish. However, the industry still needs further development when it comes to global competitiveness. Also, there are technological gaps in strawberry production. These are some. Breeding new varieties and varietal suitability, land area and climate requirements, runner and berry production, gaps in post-harvest practice, and import-export imbalance. After we have analyzed the strawberry industry in the country, we therefore recommend to invest in research and development for breeding new varieties, vital suitability, and of technology. Also, DOSS with our project should prop and assess an inventory of remaining land resources for allocation of strawberry cultivation as well as in soil management. Also, adopt mobile applications such as the Smart Spray, which allows growers to optimize and perform quality control of pesticide application in the field. And lastly, organize group of, of cooperatives for cluster production to maximize capacity and profit. Moreover, here is the proposed CSA, or Commodity System Analysis Framework of Philippine Strawberry Industry. As you can see here, the various support sectors supporting in the input, farm, processing, and market. As we have analyzed the different sectors of the strawberry commodity system, our group recommends blockchain technology to ensure the quality and safety of the products by tracing the supply chain. The technology records the chain of information relating to the transaction history of a product and enables all those involved in the product's supply chain to have knowledge of the transaction history. In this way, producers can reduce the use of product tampering throughout the supply chain. This technology can also assure the stakeholders and the consumers that the products are safe to eat or consume. On behalf of the group, thank you for listening.